Today we begin by celebrating the goodness of the earth with the first story of creation in the book of Genesis. Will you listen and read together with me those words in bold from our scripture today? God said, let the waters swarm with living things and let birds fly above the earth up in the dome of the sky. God created the great sea animals and all the tiny living things that swarm in the waters, each according to its kind, and all the winged birds, each according to its kind. God saw how good it was. Then God blessed them. Be fertile and multiply and fill the waters in the seas and let the birds multiply on the earth. There was evening and there was morning the fifth day. God said, let the earth produce every kind of living thing, livestock, crawling things, and wildlife. And that's what happened. God made every kind of wildlife, every kind of livestock, and every kind of creature that crawls on the ground. God saw how good it was. This past week marked the annual feast of St. Francis. St. Francis was an amazing holy man who was the patron saint of animals and the environment. 800 years ago, he offered humanity a genuine and deep respect for the integrity of creation. He was a friend to the poor, and he invited all people. More than just people, he invited all creation, animals, plants, natural forces, even brother, son, and sister moon to honor and praise God. He would go and he would find birds and he would give sermons to birds. He took it that seriously. On our Animal Blessing Sunday today, we honor the legacy of Francis. He was one of the first people in history to record and to recognize the absolute connection between the health of human life and the health of our environment, that they aren't separate from one another. He was one of the first people to openly appreciate animals beyond the production of milk or wool or meats. He saw the vital relationship between all life, that all life is precious. And all of us here who have made companion animals part of our families, part of our homes, you know the spiritual connection that develops. Francis felt this connection and celebrated this connection himself. And his life and legacy is here with us today. In the ancient story of creation, human being perceived a special charge to care for this world and the creatures in it. Listen to the next part of the story of creation. Then God said, let us make humanity in our image to resemble us so that they may take charge of the fish of the sea, the birds of the sky, the livestock, all the earth, and all the crawling things on earth. God created humanity in God's own image. In the divine image, God created them, male and female, God created them. God blessed them and said to them, be fertile and multiply, fill the earth and master it. Take charge of the fish of the sea, the birds of the sky, and everything crawling on the ground. Then God said, I now give to you all the plants on the earth that yield seeds and all the trees whose fruit produces its seeds within it. These will be your food. Francis spent his entire life trying to call Christians back into concern for the poor and the environment. Where most people saw the mandate to master the earth to mean not dominion like an enrata, like we learned in our children's message today, but they confused it with domination. Francis understood something different. Francis understood the spiritual connection between humanity and all of the parts of our environments, the parts of our natural world. 
he understood the profound difference between domination and dominion. Dominion is a responsible responsibility to care, to be caretakers. And so this week marked the annual feast of St. Francis, a time to celebrate our holy and spiritual connection to the animals who become like family to us. And it is a right and it is a good thing to bless our companion animals to, um, today. Francis would approve. He would encourage us, though, to make the Christian move to constantly push out love from just our households, those people that are, that are our immediate companions, to recognize the biblical mandate to care for all life on this planet. This week also marked another milestone. The carbon dioxide level, it dips every fall. It will never again in my lifetime go under 400 parts per million. Those greenhouse gases that are now part of our environment will continue to drive the destruction of so much life on this planet. This week, leading climate science scientist Mark Urban's team from the University of Connecticut estimated that in 80 years, the lifetime of my children, one out of every six species on the planet will no longer exist. This will be the sixth mass extinction that this planet has faced, and it will be the first one that humanity has ever faced. But hope remains. If humanity, if people can reclaim our responsibility to the mandate for caring for creation, having dominion, caretaking of this planet, that team estimates that they can have the number of extinctions that will happen in this century. God has given us the responsibility to care for all life on this planet. The companions that bless us as part of our families and to make the move, every one of us, to love and hold and care for all life is precious. Francis spent his entire life trying to call Christians back to concern for the poor and for the environment. And we will honor his life and his legacy today by returning and calling people back to that same care. It's as important or perhaps more important now than it was 800 years ago. We need to care for our planet and for all life. And on this Sunday, I know that our companion animals would approve. Amen.